that there is a big uh, topic when that we can talk is that freshers are not uh, treated properly have you ever encountered any weird customer so far <sighs> i would say every customer is different and dealing with every customer is like a new challenge in itself do you follow beer by sips podcast yeah i know uh yeah. can you tell us how much his studio would cost no no i have no idea okay then how much his home would cost if we include all the interiors but i don't know about his house acha okay no yeah. issues <laughs> yeah. after it was in 50 podcast in which we hosted gamers influencers authors and spiritual leaders we have now invited an interior designer named prachiti lonle on our podcast we spoke about common mistakes that usually a person makes while getting his house made then we also spoke about the famous trends that in that are uh, going on in the interior designing community and we also spoke about how artificial intelligence would shape up the future for interior designing Watch this complete podcast and let me know in the comment section what do you think about this particular episode and let us know which particular guest you want to see in interior designing lines team to not ulkani and team pwk will be back with such amazing and beautiful knowledgeable episodes till then love you guys Prachiti Donle interior designer welcome to podcast with Unal how are you I'm good thank you so much for inviting me today it's a pleasure uh, what are you thinking nowadays about regarding everything or you know uh, regarding work normally in general what are yeah, you thinking so currently i have been uh, doing uh, projects like freelance projects so i'm uh, busy with site visits and material selections and all I wanted to know more about interior designer. Okay. So I would just straight away dive into the podcast, and I I'll ask you like, uh, how did your journey start overall? Sure. So uh, basically, my journey was uh, I started watching uh, YouTube videos about interior design, and I obviously fell in love with it, and. Uh, it was uh, after my bachelor's when uh, i completed my bachelor's in french but after that i got the opportunity to do masters in interior design so i studied in bangalore and i am working in bangalore and in pune oh so you live in pune but you are currently working in bangalore no i i live in both places <laughs> we can say that why did you leave french as a you know as in a uh, career uh i think uh why did i leave french uh is because uh, i would say i always wanted to be an interior designer so that is the reason i i would say instead of leaving french i opted for interior design that is okay. a better way to say that uh, i opted for <clears throat> interior design as my passion and i made my passion into my career so as you are a, you know, you all like you know french fluently yes i have done my uh, b2 level in alliance francaise pune Perfect. and i have done bachelor's in french where i studied literature and all is it somewhere helping you or uh, pitch uh, overseas clients i mean those who are french or uh, not clients but uh, i would like to tell you that my college uh, which was lisa school of design was uh, related to france because in france also there is a lisa school of design so i got the opportunity to visit france especially paris and a small place called strasbourg so i think that that was a good opportunity where i could actually test my language i want to know more about it like uh... how like how one prepares for being an interior designer what all study does it take uh in terms of study i would say that there are many interior designers who do not even take 
डिग्री और अ डिप्लोमा इन इंटीरियर डिजाइन बट जस्ट बिकॉज दे लाइक दे जस्ट स्टार्ट इट ऑन देयर ओन एंड दे जस्ट कन्वर्ट देयर पैशन टू देयर बिजनेस विदाउट इवन लर्निंग अबाउट इट Oh, it's all what uh, I would say uh, creativity that they have in them. But uh, if you are talking about studies, then definitely there is uh, a diploma, maybe a year or a two-year diploma to a degree, a proper degree. Yeah. Again, there are uh, various uh, options what you can um, do masters in. So. There are different fields of interior design, like you can master in lighting design or so on. Sounds really amazing. Yeah. Like one has a platter in front of him. Like, like you know, if it's a, someone doesn't want to uh, study interior design, he can opt for many other things as well, which are uh, you know uh, connected with each other. Definitely. So like yeah. you know, how does one design a house in the how does one design the uh, properties interiors what all study is in, uh, included in that so uh, in house then you are talking about residential so again as i said there are different uh, options available uh, one is residential other is commercial where we have to design the offices and all and so there are many options but when we are talking about residential which is what i am focusing right now uh, which is designing the homes i think that you need to know how to talk with the customers and you need to because after all it is the home that they are going to live in for years mm. and we have to uh try to understand their preferences and what they like in their house because that is what matters the most have you ever encountered any weird customer customer so far i would say every customer is different and dealing with every customer is like a new challenge in itself so well this is a very diplomatic answer <laughs> of course because uh every uh, every customer is different like uh everyone has their own preferences and the way they deal with things right so definitely you know while researching you, while when i spoke to you also before we decided to mm-hmm. uh, shoot this podcast you said that you were having your own firm that is designed by prachiti yes. so i just wanted to know more about it like Okay. what it is all about and why did you like you know when did you actually rather decide to open mm-hmm. it so basically uh, design by prachiti it's something that i started recently like very recently not even an year ago so uh, earlier i used to do a job where i felt little bit restricting in terms of design and what i actually uh, like why i actually came Uh, in interior design field so that is the reason i thought that let's start something of my own and see if i can give my best to the customers that i am uh, like as a service provider i wanted to give the best also always do you follow beer by sips podcast just a normal question because my next question mm-hmm. is interlinked with uh, that particular thing yeah i know uh, i have seen some of the podcasts of him Yeah. Can you tell us how much his studio would cost? Like approach, not exactly because no one knows his exact no, price. I As an interior no designer, idea. no, no, I have no idea because I don't design studios. <laughs> I design homes. So okay, then how much his home would cost if we include all the interiors? Just an approach price, not exact. But, but I don't know about his house. Okay, okay, no yeah. issues. <laughs> yeah. My next question is, you know. I want to know more about his the AI part. Like okay. uh, <clears throat> as you can see, artificial mm-hmm. intelligence is taking mm-hmm. uh, things everywhere. Yeah, it's definitely. It's being included in each and everything, be it content creation, be it education, be it anything. Mm-hmm. So I just want to know: Does artificial intelligence is included in interior design studies? Definitely, uh, not in studies. uh i i am still not aware if uh, ai is coming in the colleges like they are teaching ai I, i don't think so that is still happening but i'm sure that people are trying to explore ai in interior design and especially we are talking about uh, uh like the software that i like the most which is cohome and uh, i think because of that software itself 
the job for interior designers is getting a little easier compared to what the softwares we used to use. we still use like sketchup and autocad or any other uh, rendering software but uh, when i am talking about coho it it just makes everything easy in just one software and i don't even have to install it or uh, you know uh, worry about the storage because it is uh, completely cloud based another one is like there are many like uh, there is crea and prome ai and all so on but yeah i think ai is really uh, taking uh, uh, or uh, ai is really making uh, designers job easy i would say who's your inspiration in interior designing uh, my inspiration is uh, karen bon okay uh, so karen bon is a canadian uh, interior designer like she's from vancouver canada and uh, as i said i used i fell in love with interior design watching youtube so she is one of the reason because uh, she had just started uh, making content for youtube uh, and she used to shoot about her meetings and how she uh, handles material selections and site visits and all and I, i just loved the way she used to do it and i felt like this is what i want you mentioned that you are a content creator also so how do you manage everything from your yeah. real life job Mm-hmm. managing content on various social media platforms so managing is of course a task that i have to do uh, but yeah definitely i am trying i'm putting myself on instagram and youtube and mm-hmm. trying to show up on the social media and yeah I, because i i feel that i am really liking to uh, do content creation so i think uh, i want to do it more in the future I just want to, you know, explore more about interior designing. Like, what all difficulties a uh, beginner interior designer faces? Ah, uh, that there is a big uh, topic where that we can talk is that freshers are not uh, treated properly. Uh, Why? By the uh, firms. Uh, by the experts or the okay. uh, people who who have more experience, I would say. So uh, I feel that. Uh, they should also uh, treat uh, freshers like like they are giving an opportunity so they should look at uh, them as a designer even if they are just in the initial stage i feel that is what we are lacking in the society in terms of designers because if you are telling them how much experience you have and if it is not like 5 years 10 years then the uh, perspective of looking at you changes a lot at what level uh, an interior designer gets an opportunity to work with you know uh, big shot clients uh there <laughs> is no nothing like that i feel if your work is good even if uh, you have made like two three projects uh, you have done it and uh, uh, still uh, you can get that opportunity i mean in the beginning also yeah in the beginning also i mean if if you are doing a good job and it is really catching eyes of the people especially in on social media definitely uh, people are going to approach you what were the issues you faced when you decided that you would be posting content about interior designing because i'm pretty sure mm-hmm. if we consider the indoor audience mm-hmm. they are definitely mm-hmm. going to criticize whether or not you put good content or not a uh, main issue was that i wanted to uh, put the educational content but the struggle was where i wanted to make it in- interesting for people uh. like people should watch it like they should feel interesting and still get the knowledge out of it so that was the main uh, thing i felt while creating the content and, and i still am figuring out <laughs> how to manage that why do you think that you know i mean rather i would just change the question and i would ask like how far you see interior designer as an influ- as a content or you know as interior designer as an influencer in the long run how far do you see 
so that is a good question actually and you. because <laughs> because uh, i have always wanted to uh, explore the content creation part of interior design and recently i came across uh, one uh, person her name is uh, riddhi khosla jalan uh, and she has become the first content creator or we can say influencer in interior design and because of her uh, the people have created new award which is uh, content creation and interior design and she is the first person to get that so well. i can see <coughs> there is a bright future there <laughs> I mean seriously when I was researching about interior designer mm-hmm. I don't know why but I came across a few indian podcast but still the maximum of them were not in india maximum okay. of them were shot in us the host yeah. was of us yeah. the interior designer was mm-hmm. of us just want to know why aren't in, why are only famous interior designer get in the limelight why are people not you know uh, covering those who are still in the process of it uh i feel that uh, your work should speak more than you so if if your work is getting the highlight obviously people will i mean the designer behind that will get the highlight because this field is about designing right here yeah. we we are here to show you how creative or uh, how functional how aesthetic i can make your space right so if i am able to uh, satisfy your uh, needs then definitely it is going to be a good opportunity in future i will i will just go back to the uh, previous question and mm-hmm. about where i spoke to you about you know where you decided that you want to uh, you know shift your profession mm-hmm. i just want to know that was it difficult for you or was it easy for you it was uh, both and the reason i'm asking is because <laughs> initially you are getting like you know you are earning somewhere mm-hmm. you are financially support you have, you have supported yourself financially mm-hmm. and in an instant you decide that you want to shift the profession and mm-hmm. want to within study mm-hmm. there would have been some problems financially so financially i would say uh, i had managed it quite well i would say because uh, at that time i was still taking uh, french classes like i used to take french tuitions i took almost for four years and uh, till i finished my education in interior design i was still taking the tuitions whether it be online because i shifted to bangalore so i was still taking online tuitions but once i finished my college and i got uh, an opportunity in design where i could work i definitely shifted so financially it was fine but uh, in terms of uh, i would say changing the field like the people around you or the society mm. will all, all like obviously they will think like why she is cha- uh, changing the field and why she is you know uh, when everything is going good why suddenly she wants to do this so yeah i think tackling that was <laughs> the main thing so i wanted to you know know like what would you say to your 15 year old self after you know a completion what you wanted to do yeah so i would really want her <laughs> to know that everything is happening in your way everything is going in the right direction so just have patience and yeah all is well <laughs> that's what i would say so you know what is an interior de- interior design and who is an interior designer even i know and mm-hmm. but i want to know like you know how to explain this concept to a kid to or a rather kid. to a teenager okay uh, so uh, you are saying add someone who doesn't know what is interior exactly design. okay so uh, interior design is basically designing the interiors whether it be uh, a house or an office or a studio or any other space where which you want uh, to make uh, functional and uh, it should be aesthetic like it should be pleasing to your eyes yet it should be comfortable to the person who is going to be accessing it so that is what interior design is and yeah we are uh, in interior design we talk about furniture decor and um, other stuff like uh, for example lighting also has there been any issues regarding your payment 
when you were you know in the process because i'm pretty sure hmm. there must have been in terms of payment uh, as in uh, for the freelancing yeah because i'm sure hmm. freelancers suffer a lot when it comes to you uh, know following their passion yeah i think uh, in the initial stage uh-huh. what happens is basically uh, you have to uh, be a sales person like uh-huh. you have to Got keep it. your design side aside and focus on sales and then focus on marketing your uh, name and people should know about you so i, I think that is the process that we have to go first uh, so that people will know you people will understand what services you are giving and they should have trust in you because again your name is not known mm. so they should be comfortable so i think in that process it takes time to get the customers but once you are uh, you start doing it i think after two three projects it is going to be easy as a free I mean, i'm not a freelancer but mm-hmm. <clears throat> there are some people who in my team who are freelancers mm-hmm. they often feel they often uh, you know face this difficulty of finding clients yeah so where do we find clients exactly. that is the big exactly. question like exactly. when you start freelancing this is the big question where exactly. do i start yeah so, so i hmm. want to know like where do you where did you actually find your clients when you were you know hmm. freelancing or rather you are still a freelancer right yes yes, yes. i am so how where do you find your clients so, if you want to reveal hmm. your secrets <laughs> revealing is like i think any designer would uh, suggest or tell you the same thing which i did not agree in the initial stage is uh, you have to approach your family members and relatives because i i am definitely telling you someone would come up and tell that okay i have this work can you do it so once you are doing that you are getting some uh, as a content creator again i would like to touch that you are getting something to post on your instagram and your uh, so that you can show that you are mm. working you are doing something so uh, once that is done then people will come see that space how it is done and definitely it is going to spread so this is a very you know a cliche question but were your relatives supportive <laughs> <laughs> yes i i would say i am lucky in that i had uh, one of my relative who helped me in the initial so yeah. that's how your journey began yes if you you know i want to know why do you, do you know this brand called d deco yes why is it so famous just because D Decor is a premium uh, brand in the fabrics because the quality that they provide is really good. Like uh, whether it be the uh, fabrics for the cushions and sofas, or whether it be curtains, it is really good uh, uh, material that they use. And yeah, definitely, it's a good product. Why don't you shift completely to content creation only? Because. Uh, Hmm. So social media. I am a full time podcaster. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, for me taking this decision, it took me more than three years. Hmm. <laughs> Have been on YouTube since the year two thousand nineteen. There are various channels I, uh, you know, opened and then I deleted it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But you know, social media is such a platform which actually deserves. A, you know, rather saying deserves it takes a lot. to yeah. bring out the proper content for you yeah. i don't know i think it it can be a it is yeah. a full time career yeah definitely so why don't you think of shifting completely just for the content creation thing uh i think that uh, first i would uh, i'm really trying my hand at designing the spaces which i really wanted to do when i decided to become an interior designer so i want to do that and side by side i am uh making content but yeah definitely if i feel uh, in future i might become a full time content creator so, because i really like it so so like you are only the person mm-hmm. running your channel or do you do you have anyone also you know no, helping in everything this everything is uh, i am doing on my own whether it be sales whether it be designing whether it oh, be site great. supervision or content creation or editing <laughs> everything i have doing by myself why don't you think of hiring a team now that you are earning uh yeah i am planning about it i mean it is definitely coming in the near future it the plan is there 
but currently uh, there is no one i want to ask you that uh, are there any are there any sustainable uh, practices involved like you know uh, people of nowadays see the first thing i'll ask you it's a real life example um, mm-hmm. usually we used to uh, use bricks and everything for yeah. making houses yeah. nowadays you can see that people are using cement yeah. so i want to ask you like why the, there was such difference between it why there was any change uh, and why were the bricks replaced by cement Uh, and and hmm. why uh, i mean are there any eco friendly practices involved okay so uh, i would <laughs> try to cl- clear this first that bricks are not replaced by cement like there are still structures which are made out of bricks uh, so there are structures which are made out of hollow bricks Uh, nowadays also so uh, when i'm talking about sustainable uh, practice definitely like uh, one of our teachers in college definitely uh, was uh, preaching sustainability and she used to talk more about it and she used to tell that uh, have being a sustainable interior designer is uh, necessary uh, right now because of the global warming that is going on so uh, when i'm talking about sustainable uh, we uh, the use of uh, materials which can be recycled and reused is uh, what is the focus so uh, for example uh, uh, let's take one example which is glass so glass comes in different types and can also be uh, reused so glass is one of the example for the uh, sustainable product yeah so does glass come in eco friendly practice yes <laughs> okay i want to know in let's see as you can see social media has emerging trends and everything mm-hmm. like every time if you open a social media there would be a new trend uh, mm-hmm. coming up people would make reels on it i want to know are there any trends regarding interior designing i'm pretty sure they might be because so uh, you must be knowing i'm not sure uh, that asian paints uh, had uh, one uh, exhibition recently which was about uh, new trends in 2024 and they had a big exhibition uh, unfortunately i could not be there but whatever i saw on uh, instagram i i am aware of that uh, it they actually predicted the future and uh, they showed uh, how the interior design field is going to evolve oh. yes so one of the uh, biggest uh, uh, aspect of that is uh, of the trends is ai as we discussed so ai is definitely taking up so the there might be a chance that asian paints might <clears throat> use artificial intelligence in their upcoming projects yes even even me i can use <laughs> do people actually need interior design nowadays definitely and why i mean <laughs> uh, hiring an interior designer can definitely uh, change the level of your design i would say i mean uh, normal people they can uh, plan what they want in their house but the design the concept behind it is definitely what an interior design can interior designer can uh, do or like whether it be a whether it be a statement so far that you need or maybe the color that which looks good or not or what decor should be where or how how do we organize a bookshelf or uh, where where can we uh, put the decor stuff like uh, how how many frames can we hang on the wall or what kind of uh, a wall paneling or a wall, what kind of wall treatment will look good whether it be a wall paneling or fluted panels or anything so for that you need an interior designer and i think definitely it is going to uh, make your house look better you know this is the not actually the end of the podcast i would like to host you again definitely but before ending i want to ask that mm-hmm. uh, what advice you want to give to those people who are struggling in this field in this okay. particular field the advice that i would uh, give to the upcoming interior designers or 
the freelance interior designers who are uh, searching for the work and all <clears throat> is would be to be consistent and uh, be uh, you know uh, have one focus in whatever you actually want to look for like you can't uh, uh, look for multiple things and Uh, get anything so i am saying like if you are looking for the customers to design a house you have to think in certain way that you will find the customers otherwise there are people who will uh, have different uh, focuses like okay i want to do this also this 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 that is going to end up in doing nothing so yeah that is the thing and of course being consistent as i said i want to invite you on part 2 saying Definitely, it on the record like itself to, yeah <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on the show i thank hope you, you enjoyed yes, because definitely. this is the first uh, you know <clears throat> interior design and topic concept i don't know there has mm-hmm. been there hasn't been any podcast so far mm-hmm. that we have recorded in under this concept okay. and i really look forward for more such episodes definitely more such amazing designers yeah <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show thank you So this was Prachiti Dhondli, who once was a f- full-time French teacher, but who then decided to follow her passion and became a freelancer in interior designing. I really hope this particular podcast might have taught you a lot of things, just like how how other podcast does. And if it has helped you in some way in enriching your knowledge, please guys comment below. that what all you do learned and which particular interior designer you want to see on our show in the future till then love you guys and keep supporting pwk love you guys thank you